Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Columbus, Georgia. We're glad that you're here to join us as we worship God by offering our prayers and singing songs and listening to scripture. Please come in with us that we may worship God together. lesson today comes from the prophet Habakkuk, and he is writing at a time there is great um, wrongdoing going on in Judah. He is told that God will bring about justice, and the Babylonians are going to be the ones. And he's like, but they're even worse than we are. And God says, I will take care of that too. In the midst of this, Habakkuk learns that God is God. Listen now to the Word of God. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. And so the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. And then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of Luke in the 19th chapter, and it tells the story of Jesus and Zacchaeus. Let us listen that we may hear what God will share with us. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not see because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. And Jesus came to that place and he looked up and he said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble, and they said, Jesus has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there, and he said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The word of the Lord. David Saucier was a engineer who worked for NASA in Houston, Texas. In 1988, he was part of a team of NASA scientists who collaborated with Dr. Michael DeBakey a world-renowned surgeon who led the way in many surgical techniques, including heart transplants here in the United States. Uh, Saucier's interest was technical. He was approached by Dr. DeBakey with a technical problem. How do you regulate the flow of a liquid as it going through a pump? And what engineer, I know a few engineers, what engineer would not be enthused with having to deal with a technical problem? like liquid flow and a pump, except in this case, the liquid is blood and the pump is the heart. 
Dr. David Saucier was also interested because four years before he was presented with this technical challenge, he had an intensely personal challenge. He was a patient of Dr. DeBakey's and had, in fact, received a heart transplant at the hands of that surgeon. Several years after all of this, Saucier wrote a reflection about how the transplant had changed his life, and he identified three things that had happened. First, there was a sense of urgency. He wrote, I live with a renewed sense of urgency, and that has changed my priorities because I realize that if, I, if I'm going to stop and smell the roses, I had best do it now. The second change was a sense of gratitude. I don't accept this miracle that has happened within me with my new heart. I don't understand this, this miracle that has happened within my new heart. All I can do is accept and feel gratitude for each additional day I live. And finally he wrote, I now walk a little closer to God because when you've been through a harrowing experience with someone, you form a bond with them. Recovering from the transplant was at times a harrowing experience, and I guarantee you that I clung to God for dear life during these times. He was the good friend who saw me through sometimes the only one who thoroughly understood. I'm grateful that he was there for me. Three markers identified in this heart transplant experience, urgency, gratitude, and spirituality. And I think those three markers are present today, not simply in our scripture, but in the totality of our worship as we gather here in this place. A sense of urgency, the experience of gratitude, and the spirituality that comes as we deepen our relationship with God and with each other. Urgency. The prophet called out, How long, O Lord? How long is this going to happen? When will things change? There is a sense of urgency there. There was a sense of urgency in Zacchaeus' story. The crowd lined the streets as they awaited the arrival of this Jesus. But Zacchaeus anticipated and, and felt that sense of urgency, but he could not see because he was too short. And so he ran ahead and he climbed up a tree so that he could gather and see that. With birth and new life as there is with Lincoln today, there is a sense of urgency, a sense of coming into time and to the, the fullness of time. And I must admit, as Margaret alluded to, I'm a new grandfather this week. I'm in your club, guys. And there is a sense of urgency that comes when there is a birth, and be it a, a child or a grandchild or even a great-grandchild, there is this wonder that surrounds us in different ways. And then we remembered the saints those who have died in this past year. And whenever we call upon the saints, whenever we remember those who have lived before us and gone on, we offer thanksgiving and there's a sense of urgency as we anticipate the time that we had with them. We run ahead and we find a spot, we climb up in that so we can see what's going on just like Zacchaeus did. And then Jesus came along and he said to Zacchaeus, come down now, I'm going to your house today. Run ahead, climb up, and come down to serve. There is a sense of gratitude. Zacchaeus was not a popular man. He was known to have made his wealth on the backs of his neighbors and of his family. It is likely that he did not have many friends, and I would guess to say that his family did not want to claim him. No doubt it was tough to work through that crowd. Nobody was going to let him through. That's Zacchaeus. So he went ahead and had to run, run, run on in front. 
But then a sense of gratitude exploded for him because someone accepted him in ways that he had never experienced. And he responded. He recognized that what he had done was not the right thing. And his sense of gratitude at being accepted exploded into gracious generosity. Baptisms are a time when there is gratitude for all the things that await. Yesterday was my son's 26th birthday. The same week that he was born, he will remember in his life, is also the week that his daughter was born. But the week that he was born 26 years ago was also the week that one of the matriarchs of the church I serve died. The power of that is that there is new life even as we celebrate the life that has gone before us. There is a way in which new life will give way to anticipation and, and gratitude for the things that have gone before us. By, convict, by affirming our faith in Jesus Christ, we join with the chorus of saints that not only have lived, that not only live now, but those who will live. We run ahead. We climb up and we come down to serve. Gratitude can give way to spirituality. Gratitude can give way to us deepening our relationships with each other. For Zacchaeus, he was accepted as he had never been accepted before. He was the agent of the occupying imperial force, and he had lost the trust of his own people. No doubt Zacchaeus had been the cause for any number of harrowing experiences for the people who lived in Jericho. But Jesus offered him a different way. Jesus accepted him as, his, as he was, and because Jesus did that, he changed who he was. And he offered back what he had taken. We all have harrowing experiences in our life. They come in different times and different places. They can be an opportunity to build relationships. God is known to us as we stand on the edge of those abysses that we look into and we wonder what will be next. The children, the children of Israel faced the reality that when they were in captivity, they did not know what was going to happen. How long, O oh Lord, will this happen? And the prophet receives the word, the righteous will live by their faith. Or as another translation renders it, the righteous person will live honestly. As we have taken vows this day to support Lincoln, as well as Zach and Amy. We promised on behalf of the church, not just this church, but the church, Christians everywhere, where Jesus is Lord is proclaimed. We have promised on their behalf that Lincoln will have a community of faith, whether he is in this community in Columbus or in other places. And we have heard testimony how Amy is fruit of that. She was nurtured in this community and went away for a season and is back now. There will be others like that. There will be others who come to us who have been baptized in other churches for whom we will respond and we will provide a place of developing a relationship of love and service with Jesus Christ. We do that in the midst of harrowing times. I would not be honest if I did not say to you as I read the newspapers, as I listen to the things that are happening in the world and in the church all over the world, that I do not have some concerns. But I also have a conviction, a conviction that undergirds whatever concerns there are for the church and for the world. My conviction is that in our growing relationship with God and with others, we will be able to live through whatever harrowing times there are.
Christians and generations before us have done that. And Christians in the generations after us will do that as well. Let us share this day. We live with a sense of urgency. We live with a sense of gratitude. And we live with the knowledge that we develop our spiritual relationships with God and Jesus Christ. Let us do that. Let us run ahead. Let us climb up. And let us come down to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's been a privilege to join you this day in worship. We're glad that you were here. First Presbyterian Church seeks to serve and minister in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor. Go in peace as you love and serve God.